This is my desktop. It looks like a giant fishbowl. In fact, uh, that's what I call it. The fishbowl. I've had it for about a year now, and it cost me about $3,000. Very expensive fishbowl. But what shocked me the most was that my graphics card, that giant chocolate bar you see, they call in awesome. AMD RX 7900 XTX. What's that? A flagship card, by the way, that contributed to about a third of the total PC price. Well, the worst part, it was the cheapest flagship available, especially in comparison to cards its competitor Nvidia was selling. But this wasn't the case even nearly 10 years ago. So it's left me to ask, why are your graphics cards so expensive? Oh, it makes the PS5 Pro look like a toy, as you'd probably expect. Though Nvidia's MSRP puts the 4090 in between the 3090 and 3090 tie. A GPU is like a time machine because it lets you see the future sooner. On a single graphics card. <laughs> The year is 2021, the world is recovering from COVID, there is a massive chip shortage, and GPU prices are going up and up. Third-party sellers are pricing higher than normal. This is because graphics cards are not normally sold at a fixed price, or even by their manufacturer. Instead, graphics cards are typically sold by a third party and are priced with an MSRP, a manufacturer's suggested retail price. Like the name says, this price is a recommendation, and third-party sellers will usually have different prices for the same card, that's because they add their own cooling system, circuit board, stickers, accessories, whatever the hell they want to add to justify the price hike. Well, because of this, they can also set their prices to be more in tune with market demand, which obviously will also increase and decrease the price. So that's it, right? Uh, simple supply and demand are causing all this? Oh, yes and no. You see, when Nvidia, in this case, sells their GPU chip, they only sell it to the third party at a wholesale or invoice price. This is meant to take care of NVIDIA's material costs, labor, R&D, shipping, and also adds a profit margin. This is different from the MSRP though, as that's meant to have a profit margin for the third party seller. Any extra money made due to increased demand only goes to the third party. So NVIDIA, even though they are selling more GPUs, are not gonna be getting the extra money. Now, I'm not trying to be conspiratorial here. Maybe NVIDIA is increasing the MSRP or increasing prices as a whole in order to get a larger slice of the pie. Some evidence you can use to support it would be we see this happening if we look at the price of flagship cards from 2016 and compare it to today's flagship cards. But that's not the whole story. The 1080 Ti was the flagship, but only for gaming systems. NVIDIA was also selling an enthusiast card called the Titan X, which was priced at $1,200, and the RTX Titan, a part of their 20 series, which was sold at 2,500 MSRP. Little note though, that card is actually more expensive than the 5090s. A few years later, NVIDIA ended up discontinuing the Titan series and replaced it with the 90 model of GPUs, the first one being the 3090, and they've pretty much stuck with that ever since. You following along? Don't worry, I'm confused too. If you're to take that basically, Yes, they were trying to sell more expensive graphics cards to get a larger slice of the pie. But if you were to look at the prices between the Titan series and the 90 series, they're pretty consistent. This is also why I'm a bit skeptical on the Nvidia increases prices so that they can make more money idea. The evidence isn't really there. Plus, Nvidia would gladly tell you that the price increases are also due to innovations in ray tracing, deep learning upscaling, and AI. And I think that that plays a larger part, especially for NVIDIA. What we are really seeing is the third party sellers taking advantage of the demand and are the ones that are really causing the price increases. The surge in demand is also causing the secondhand market to go bonkers. In fact, people are reporting that they are able to sell GPUs that they bought a few years back at near or above retail price. $101 for a Krabby Patty? With cheese, Mr. Squidward, with cheese. But what intrigues me more is where is this surge in demand coming from? Like, is it coming from gamers? Well, no. It's coming from crypto. <laughs> Bitcoin, the best money we've ever had. What is Dogecoin? <laughs> The crypto market has been bleeding, and today is no different. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. 
I'm not going to go into depth of how crypto is mined, but here's a quick look. You mine crypto by solving very complex equations. The user that solves it the fastest receives the crypto as a reward. So in order to have higher odds of getting more crypto, you will need faster mining rigs. What makes GPUs so important is that you can pull the cards or tether them together. This gives you way more computational power, thus allowing you to solve more equations and earn more crypto. This is why you see rigs like these. The building that's directly behind me, inside of the buildings, we have this shelving that's a thousand feet long, 20 feet tall, and there are just miner after miner after miner after miner or even smaller rigs like these. Behind me, you'll notice about 20 graphics cards are mining right now, along with other crypto mining rigs. And as the value of cryptocurrency rose and rose, there was a larger and larger push to buy up GPUs for mining. Crypto miners spent around $15 billion during the craze. Now I'm pretty sure you're watching this thinking, well, what does hoarding and scalping have to do with this? And that does play a part, but hoarding and scalping, they're usually done to make the shortage worse. Think of the toilet paper shortage during the beginning of COVID or hand sanitizer as well. Bought 18,000 bottles of sanitizer after the U.S. saw the first coronavirus death. No, my business is not taking advantage of people. They are usually there to further exploit it. So pile that on with a crypto boom and a chip shortage, well, you got a very expensive GPU. So what then caused prices to drop? The bubble popped. Crypto prices fell beyond what was profitable and graphics cards became more available. So easy to understand, right? Crypto is the cause in the rise in demand and we can track supply issues with the rise and fall in the price of Bitcoin. But crypto is not the reason why it's happening now. Generative AI. Generative AI. Generative AI. Generative AI. I'm like, wait, why am I doing this? I can just wait for the AI to do it. AI has taken over, at least in the chip market. Let's say that this entire piece of paper here represents the total amount of sales that Nvidia had for the fiscal quarter of March of 2020. You see three colors. Red is gaming related sales, yellow is data center related sales, blue is the rest. That consists of automotive, robotics, visualizations, etc. And this piece of paper represents how much Nvidia made for the fiscal quarter of December in 2024. AI data centers are putting in huge swaths of cash from microchips, literally creating a gold rush far larger than whatever sales were happening during the crypto bubble. And if you're in a gold rush, the only way you're making money is by selling shovels. This is what Nvidia is doing now, responding to the demand by going full throttle into AI chips and in creating data towers. And so far it's proven somewhat to be a problem for gamers. In late January of 2025, Nvidia had plans to release its newest line of graphics cards, the RTX 50 series. And while all the cards were sold within minutes, there weren't that many sold to begin with. Nvidia decided to do a paper launch, selling very few of their new GPUs, which in turn is now being exploited by scalpers. The worst part is that waiting times for new GPUs are going to be upwards of weeks for the mid-range 5080 model, to upwards of four months for the new 5090. Now, why is there such limited supply? Sadly, I think the answer is pretty simple. Nvidia doesn't need to sell cards to gamers anymore. Seriously, think about it. Any new 5090 or 5080 made is one microchip that could have been processed for AI and sold to a data center for tens of thousands of dollars more than what you would get from a gamer or, lo well, and behold, a crypto miner. Just look at the numbers. Gaming GPU sales have been pretty steady for the last four years, while data center sales have gone bonkers. And while there has been some hearsay about supply stabilizing and more GPUs being shipped soon, there's also this really odd press release that Nvidia shared that said that they released twice the amount of GPUs that they did in the 40 series in the, around the same time period. I mean, technically maybe. GeForce is sold out all over the world. GeForce is sold out all over the world. 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 I'll get a look, y'all. To be honest with you, this leaves me pretty worried. I really hope I'm wrong here when I say this, but a part of me gets a feeling that what we're currently seeing is just going to be the new normal. That graphics cards, especially from Nvidia, are just going to be released in very small quantities. They're making so much more money from data centers that they don't really need to sell GPUs anymore. 
Why? Why bother? Reports are coming out that a lot of the pricing issues is coming from a obvious lack of supply. That, that's no surprise there. But what's really interesting is that this is not just affecting the secondhand market, you know, eBay and whatnot, but it's also affecting the pre-built market. Power GPU, a company that does pre-built PCs, released a video on Twitter talking about the price of NVIDIA GPUs and addressed accusations of price gouging from its customers. This is the part that I honestly don't understand how companies are just sitting back and letting this crap happen. So essentially the RTX 5090 has been a really hard GPU to get. As everyone knows, everyone are, people are still lining up at Micro Center to get them. Um, and even us as a system integrator, we're also having very much difficulty getting these GPUs. But the problem is now moving forward is now we're going into mid March and we're, we're essentially, even from distribution, we're getting scalped, literally. Like we're literally getting offered GPUs, 5090s, at cost for us, anywhere from $3,050 to $3,100. And these are not even high-end models. These are like low to mid-range models. Yeah, these GPUs are pretty much just getting scalped. Uh, we're getting scalped at this point. So I want people to realize that, and I want people to know that at Power GPU, when we're, when we're giving you these prices of these 5090s, it's not that we're scalping you. It's not that we're raising the prices on these GPUs to the point where we're making this crazy margin. It's because we're literally getting these GPUs sold to us at a crazy amount. Um, and, and I mean, yeah, people are willing to pay for it, but at the same time, it just, I feel horrible. It feels, I just feel gross. Plus, I uh, just want to let you know that as I am working on this, GTC, which is NVIDIA's big uh, AI, they call it their AI conference or something like that, that's going on. So if there are any updates, just letting you know, I'll put them in this moment. How are you doing? How do you like, how do you like your new physics engine? You like it, huh? Yeah, I bet. I know. Tactile feedback. So what can you do? Um... I'm going to give you three options, okay? Number one, bite the bullet. Buy it now and don't worry about it. I honestly wouldn't recommend that option, but that is a choice you can do. That is an option you can take. The second one is wait. Hopefully supply lines get better. I mean, there's really nothing that has been shown to me that is giving me that sort of confidence, but... Wait till summer, see what happens. Hopefully they'll have some more available and you can finally make that upgrade maybe at a better price too. And the third option that I personally would uh, recommend, see if you really need this new graphics card or you really need a new, uh, really need to update. And if you really do, try and consider the secondhand market, maybe lower end cards from a previous generation or two, give that a try. Well, because to be honest, uh, do I really see that much of an improvement between generations? I mean, I can't really see it, to be honest with you. <laughs> Basically, any GPU that can do above 120 frames per second, like, I just don't see the need. You don't really need to game at like a thousand frames a second because it, it, it's, it's stupid. It's amazing that these, these, uh, GPUs are so powerful, but like ultimately when it comes down to it, are you really going to make use of its abilities or are you just going to play like solitaire and power wash simulator on it? I'm just going to end it with this graph from a uh, steam survey done in February of 2025. 3.13% of people surveyed game at ultra high depth resolution. About 52% still game at 1080p. And the most interesting part, the top 10 GPUs which make up about 47% of total GPUs used. None of them are flagship models. All of them are surprisingly entry-level or mid-level cards. And if you're wondering, flagship models only make up 1.43% of total GPUs used. Okay, first off, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this. This is my first video. I, I'm i gonna try and make more. I really wanna make more. This is all just me. I got some great ideas that I really wanna bring to life and I'm really excited. I hope that uh, you'll be along for the journey. Thank you so much. Take care. Tactile feedback.
rigid body 